Welcome to Car Pervert. I'm Johnny Smith. Today we're going to be going green laning on green bikes. Actually, that one's not green, but these two are. So today I've decided to do a feature that I've wanted to do for ages. I wanted to go green laning on green bikes. And by that I mean green laning is something the UK is full of. And they're like quite a lesser known um, place. They're roads that have vehicular access uh, all over the place that you can find on ordnance survey maps. And as long as you're respectful and as the vehicle that you're driving or riding is, is road legal, you can go exploring. And in this time of social distancing, you can get away from it all. And what better way to get away from it all and explore nature and have a bit of peace on an electric motorbike? And that's what this is. This is an electric motorbike. That's an electric motorbike. That isn't. We've, we've got that here for reference. And I've brought some experts with me because I'm not going to lie. I'm not a motorcycle expert. I have a full license, but I've only ever ridden um, periodically here and there. So I've brought with me here. This is John Spencer from Not Your Average Bikes. John is a zero bike dealer. These are zero motorcycles. And I think zero are kind of like doing for the motorbike electric world what Tesla is doing for the electric car world. I've also brought along my friend here, Mark Potsky Potter. <laughs> and Potsky, well, I've known Mark since he was editor of Motorcycle News for many years when we used to work on magazines and, and papers together. So he's also a dab hand on a bike. We do right. And he's got vast experience of pistons and electric. Yeah. So these two boys collectively know a lot more about bikes than I do. We're gonna we're gonna get our stuff on and carry on. But before we do that, here are the rules of green laning and what green laning really is. Green bikes for green laning. What are green lanes? Well, green lanes are public byways that are often rural and lesser used. They're never tarmacked. They're often allowing nature to kind of grow back, hence the term green. Green lanes are dotted all over the UK, so you can actually legally venture off the beaten track to explore away from the crowd. I'm not an accomplished road rider, so this really appeals to me. And green laning on a green motorbike with zero emissions appeals to my nature loving side as well as my mechanical fascination. To green lane, you have to be road legal, MOT'd, taxed and insured on your vehicle. You also have to behave. This isn't a motocross track. So you're looking for public rights of way of two types. One of them is byways open to all traffic known as boats and on an ordnance survey map, boats are shown as a series of green pluses. The other thing you can look for is other public access. These can be unclassified country roads, UCRs, which on an ordnance survey map come under other routes with public access and are a line of widely spaced green dots on these particular maps. These are not classed as public rights of way, so any restrictions do need checking with the local authorities first. If you're unsure about what your boats and your UCRs and your ORPAs are, it's probably easier to join someone like GLASS, the Green Lane Association. Go to glass-uk.org. It costs 48 quid a year, you can get lots of guides, and you will always know when you're travelling in the right direction and on the best routes. Boats, UCRs. Remember guys, respect your surroundings. No litter, no going too fast. Prep your vehicle first, make sure it's fully road legal and apparently carry a saw. Let's have a little chat guys. I'll tell you what, I'm absolutely marinating. Suddenly, <laughs> as soon as we start rolling, the, cat, the sun comes out. The and... sun comes out as soon as we start, start filming. What I think, the way I see electric motorbikes is in the same way with cars. As soon as people realise what they're capable of yeah. and the way they feel, they're suddenly really interested. At first they dismiss them because they don't make the sound. You know, that it doesn't sound like that. Yeah. But actually there's so much to enjoy about it. 
isn't there? I mean, this bike, for example, this this is this is the one I'm riding today, which is really cool. It's called the FX FX. That's the FXS, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to try and remember <laughs> all the information. Now. So so basically, you've got the, the the main the main part of it. This part here is the battery pack, isn't it? Yeah. The motor's down there at the back, the, the sort of cylindrical thing. Yep. This is chain drive converted from belt drive. Yeah. That one's belt drive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which is what they come as a yeah. standard. But most people that do the sort of green laning will do it on a on a, yeah, on this a piston is motorbike. WR250 Yamaha is your kind of archetypal green lane trail bike essentially. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This bike's a few years old, but it's in really good condition, and it's um, it's a lovely thing, but it's uh, it's very different to these. Yeah. Well, what's weird is when I was riding here, we, we, we did about 10 miles or so to get to this green lane. I didn't know, I mean, I've lived around here for eight years. Mm -hmm. You've lived around Same. here. Same, I didn't know this existed. I'm back here next week. Yeah. And this is what's <laughs> cool about green laning. As soon as you open up a, an ordnance survey map and you know what you're looking for, there's actually quite a lot of them around Great Britain and they're a great chance to just get away from the madding crowd and, and explore them. Someone like me, that's an absolute beginner on a motorbike. Yeah. I feel more confident doing something like this at average speeds. I'm not looking to go on a motocross track. I'm not looking to get my knee down on the road. So it's that nice kind of leisure cruising, but also enjoying a bit of mother nature at the same time. Yeah, and I you can enjoy it more with it being electric as well. It's, you get to take in the sounds around you. You're not yeah. confined to just listening to an exhaust note, which, yeah, I mean, I like an exhaust note like anybody else. Yeah. But it's a different experience on these. You can hear the birds tweeting. Yeah. You can chitty chat amongst yourselves even if you want to do while you're riding. Um, I was going to say, I different. can hear a lot more when I'm on the road. Oh, yo, yo, yo. There is this weird lawlessness feeling. I feel like you're such a rebel, green laning over the lumps and bumps on a serious looking bike that has serious intentions but yet zero tailpipe emission and totally legal the loudest sound as you can hear is the it's the chain and then the knobbly tires but this zero fx is a wonderful thing you know you've got American company made in America but using components that are proven from other manufacturers so Japanese shock absorbers brakes from Spain good suspension travel really progressive throttle I love it and uh, It's just great that these sorts of green lanes are on our doorstep all over the country and yet so many people have no idea and I really enjoy that sort of feeling of freedom. John, you, you deal in piston bikes and you deal in, in Zero yeah. like other, and other electric bikes. What, what sort of people buy Zeros? There's a, a real mix. Uh, you have some people that are going to use them to commute to work and back. Yeah. Uh, you've got people that want this particular model that we did, which is a, a Black Ops, we called it, which is really designed for green learning. So you've got people that want to use it for that. You've got people um, that want it just as a play bike. Yeah. Um, and a couple of people that want to go just doing general touring on them. Um, if you kit them out with the appropriate chargers, you can, you can quite easily go and do a bit of touring on them. It's a bit of a different mindset you need to just go to a mm. petrol station and filling up. Yeah, but it's quite feasible as yeah. some of the guys have proved that have done zeros. That, that Big you know trips, about. lands into John O'Groats, you know, across to Germany, all kinds of stuff. Um, yeah. So they are capable. We just, like John says, you just got to treat it with a bit of a different mindset and maybe just plan it a little bit more in advance. Yeah. Somebody like me though that will do that would only have a ride occasionally. And I, you know, I know you can commute on these bikes. In fact, they're perfect for doing mm. commutes. You know, yeah. short journeys, stuff like that. Yeah. But for someone like me that would, would go out on a Sunday and enjoy it, maybe do a 50 mile round trip, something like this works for that, doesn't it? Oh, it's more than capable. You'll do, if you're doing green lane type riding, you'll probably see 75 miles, 80 miles out of a charge on that. 
So you can really? go out, do your day's riding, mm -hmm. if you're going to do 50, 60 miles, yeah. go home, put it in your garage and just plug it in. So he's done that, and, and this one, like you say, this has been modified. And the reason why I became interested in this bike is after seeing the fact that the police had ordered some of them. Yeah, the police, mm -hmm. South Yorkshire Police had ordered two pretty much to this spec, almost identical to this, um, for their off-road policing team, so for antisocial behaviour um, in and around South Yorkshire. Yeah. I'm nowhere near South Yorkshire, so it's <laughs> definitely nothing to do with me. Let's talk about the specs of this, because I guess this is the hero bike in this particular instance, the FX. You've done a couple of little mods. So as standard, it comes yeah. with belt belt drive. Belt drive is standard, so yeah. that's one conversion, the chain and sprocket kit. Yeah, and that's more for an aggressive off-road? Yeah, more durability, so if you're getting stones like we've got here, they're not getting stuck in the belt and potentially puncturing the belt and making yeah. it split. You get a stone into that, it'll just be crushed and you yeah. carry on your ride. So just yeah. a bit more durability. So more, the most of these mods are done for if you tend to favour doing a bit of laning, a bit yeah, of... Yeah, yeah, that's what this one's been modified for, specifically yeah, aimed at yeah. a bit of green lane. So the tyres are a more aggressive off-road tyre. They're they road are. legal, <laughs> but they're about as aggressive while still being road legal that you can get. Yeah. Uh, the hand guards, um, uh, an additional. Yeah. On this particular one, we've converted the rear brake to the handlebar on the left-hand side because yeah. you've got no clutch, mm -hmm. so it just gives you a bit better control. If you stood up on the pegs, you've got your, brake, your rear brake to hand there, quite literally. Um, the other modifications we have removable indicators, so these are, are they removable? clip off indicators. Not what? removable just when you drop it. Look at that. So it's like <laughs> a cool. jack plug. That is a headphone jack. So really if you're going off-road, just That's unplug those. That's great. I've never even seen those. It's fantastic. Plug up the, the sockets. Put them in your pocket. <laughs> Put them in your pocket. <laughs> if you drop it, you're not going to snap an indicator. Great, right, which is the brilliant. easiest thing to do when you drop a bag. That's so good. The foot pegs are more aggressive. Is another addition. I've noticed that. Yeah, I have noticed with the rubber. With that the rubber. feels really good on those footrests. Just gives you that bit more purchase on the yeah. footrests, especially when you're off-road. Five-year warranty. On the battery, yep. Unlimited yep. mileage warranty on the batteries, five years. Two years on the bike as a whole. The battery on this is a 7.2 kilowatt hour, right? Yep. And the motor, I think, is 20 kilowatts of uh, power, which is about 27 horsepower. But that's not really the main event with the e-bikes, e electric motorbikes, is huh. it? No. It's all about torque. It's all about the torque. Yeah. And I have to say the torque's really quite addictive. I've, mm. I thought I'll ride it here, get used to it in eco mode. I know sport mode exists, but I'm not going to be an idiot and just slam it straight into sport. I'm just going to get used to it. And I have to say it's really quite, it's a lot poker than I thought in eco. Yeah. yeah. So a standard FX would be 9990. Um, yeah. That's after the government grant, which is at the moment 1,500 pounds. Okay. Um, this particular model specced up like this with the tires, the foot pegs, the hand guards and everything. Uh, this one would be eleven and a half thousand. Okay, so starts at just under ten. Yep. This one about eleven and a half. Five year warranty on the battery. Two year warranty on the bike. So in terms, if I was using this bike to do a sort of ten mile commute on back roads that we've done today, mm -hmm. and then I did a bit of knobbing around on green lanes here and there, what sort of the, 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 what kind of a range would you get if I was riding it like a beginner like me? I'm not going full balls to the wall every time. It says 70 to 75 miles yeah, out of the charge. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. yeah. There's, there's people that have managed to eke 100 miles out of the charge. In, I know some of the people in London city centre. Yeah, I yeah. think that's right. If you're in town, you get 100, but round here, probably more like, exactly as John's saying, 75, 80 miles. Yeah. It, it's all about how much gas you use, of course, yeah. you know. And I guess if you electric. choose these tyres, they're, <laughs> less, they're less efficient than a nice smoothie. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. They're meant to get you through mud, you know, yeah. so yeah. they're going to take a bit out of it. Yeah. I think in a world where we're being encouraged to stay distanced from one another. Riding a motorcycle is probably as good as it gets. You're out in the fresh air, enjoying a bit of speed and a bit of power. But you don't have to talk to people, you don't have to breathe near people. Listen. This is the joy of green laning. Nobody around. People are disappointing, right? Nature isn't. It's brilliant. We've had such a good time. We're only about halfway through the day. I've still got like 78% charge. 
I have to say, I've really been quite taken by this because I am not, I'm the first person to say I'm not an accomplished bike rider. I don't ride on the road very much and I like kind of cruising and I don't feel like feeling outside my comfort zone on a motorbike. But what we've done to this ACE, we've done probably 12 miles on the road, come off the road, pick one of these green lanes, it's like half an hour from my house that I didn't even know existed. And we've gone down here, we've blitzed, I don't know, four miles of off-roading. Off, off don't get me wrong, this is not a motocross track, it's not super technical, but it's just been really enjoyable. And I, this bike has a, a shared load of power. The progression on the throttle is really lovely and also the balance of the bike, it's, it, it was, it's a lot less daunting than I thought it would be. I mean, I look at when, I'm, when I was riding it earlier, and we had a, I was looking down and I was admiring the sort of the quality of the controls and everything. It's a really well put together bike. So yeah. these are made in the States. Yep. yep. It's an American company. So like I said before, I do think that this is kind of like the, this is, this is for Tesla for bikes, really. Tesla, American company, pioneering with EVs. Zero, I mean, Zero have been around a while now. Since 2006 it started, yeah. Yeah. So 2006 started and then 2010 was the first road bikes. The first road bikes. Yeah, so they've yeah. been building road EVs for, to, for 10 years. Yeah. yeah. And I actually, when, when, when I, I did that Zoom call with you um, on my Aurenthetic Charger, you guys have got an old Zero. Yeah, one of the you? first ones from 2010, yeah. yeah. I think it's VIN number 113, I think it is. So actually, yeah, one of the very it, first ones. It actually still looks really good. It's, it's, it's a gorgeous still condition, really yeah. Yeah. The thing is, we're in a world now where e-bikes are getting bigger and more powerful. And then they're, they're sort of a no man's land, aren't they? Between like, are they a bicycle or are they now a motorbike that have mandatory pedals? And some of them you can use on road and some of them you can use off road. So yeah, you can go green leaning on an on e-mountain a e bike, absolutely. And there are some really good ones of those out here. But if you want an actual motorbike, and this is what I'm focusing on for this, this is an actual motorbike. Um, and it, it's not a street bike, you know, it's, they're, they're a faster zeros, they make faster bikes, don't yeah, they? Yeah, 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 up to 124. Yeah, and they make further range motorbikes. This particular model in the UK, you can only get with the bigger battery. Is that yeah. right? You can get it with a smaller battery in the States. Yeah, in yeah, yeah. yeah. But actually, when you think about what miles you can get out of this bike, the performance that I've experienced today has been really, really pretty good, actually. Quite addictive. If I hadn't done a full bike license, if I just had a CBT, can you get a Zero that's CBT friendly? Yeah, a few of the Zeros in the range are CBT friendly, and yeah. they'll still, you can get a CBT version of one of these, and it'll still do 85 miles an hour. Will it really? It's, yeah, it's... Of this, Quite impressive. Of the FX? Uh, yes, yeah. I didn't know that. Tell me about the servicing, because obviously electric cars, the servicing intervals tend to be um, lo longer, and there's less to go wrong, so there's sort of less, it's more about checking rather than yeah, changing stuff. Yeah, it's the same for these. We'd say every 12 months for, uh, for a zero. Um, the main thing is to flush the brake fluid through and renew it because of the ABS can degrade the fluid. Yeah. Other than that, it's ABS. A, I forgot about that. It has got ABS, hasn't it? It has, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't even notice. Which is, you can turn off on these particular models as well, if yeah. you want to do, and then the next time you turn it back on, it'll be activated again. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a brake fluid flush, and then checking bearings, checking your tyres, checking your brakes, lubricating any pivot points, so your, your foot pegs, your levers, things like that. So it's your non-electric stuff? Yeah, Actually, yeah. The, 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 the only electronic thing on the update is to plug it into the machine and it will see if there's any firmware updates for it. So it might be a firmware update to improve the economy of the battery. Yeah. It could be a bit of a performance update from testing that they've done. Yeah. So once every 12 months you get it updated as well. I think the first I knew of electric motorbikes being taken really seriously was when the TT Zero started. Then when you see hardcore motorbike enthusiasts starting to embrace e-bikes, e-motorbikes, then you know things are going to be bright. Motocrossing is getting big in the electric world. Electric trials bikes, they're coming on brilliantly and I desperately want to have a go on one, despite being a massive novice. I think the future for this stuff is really, really good. Now that, that zero, those zeros in their own right are really good just as a road bike. But I think it's proved today that you can have a lot of fun as someone that's not you know, an accomplished motocross rider or an accomplished road rider, you can have a great laugh. And green lanes, they exist. Whether you drive a car on them, whether you ride a motorbike on them, they're such an underused part of this country. And with social distancing and maybe 
getting back and enjoying nature a bit more, that's the perfect tool for the job, right? Thank you for watching Car Pervert. If you've never subscribed before, why not subscribe? If you own an electric motorbike, I'd love to hear what you think of them and what you do with yours. And if you hate electric motorbikes, why? Let me know. Thank you.